Welcome to our Bible study series by HelpfulScripture.com. In this video, we review the 10 most relevant Bible verses about free will. If you want to study this topic more, then be sure to click the link below to our website. Our website, HelpfulScripture.com, has many more passages on this topic, and hundreds of additional topics. Also, if you want to share the Bible with others, then click the like button and share this video with your friends. Now let's get started. Passage number 1. The first verse on the subject of free will is Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 12. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy and without defect before him in love, having predestined us for adoption as children through Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his desire, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he freely gave his favor in the beloved. In him we have our redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure which he purposed in him to an administration of the fullness of the times, to sum up all things in Christ, the things in the heavens and the things on the earth, in him. We were also assigned an inheritance in him, having been foreordained according to the purpose of him who does all things after the counsel of his will, to the end that we should be to the praise of his glory, we who had before hoped in Christ. Passage number 2. The second verse in our study of free will is found in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 15 through 20. It says, Behold, I have set before you today life and prosperity, and death and evil. For I command you today to love Yahweh your God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments, his statutes, and his ordinances, that you may live and multiply, and that Yahweh your God may bless you in the land where you go in to possess it. But if your heart turns away, and you will not hear, but are drawn away and worship other gods, and serve them, I declare to you today that you will surely perish. You will not prolong your days in the land where you pass over the Jordan to go in to possess it. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. Therefore choose life, that you may live, you and your descendants, to love Yahweh your God, to obey his voice, and to cling to him, for he is your life, and the length of your days, that you may dwell in the land which Yahweh swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Passage number 3. For our third verse, we turn in our Bible to John chapter 3 verses 16 through 21. It reads, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only born Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God didn't send his Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world should be saved through him. He who believes in him is not judged. He who doesn't believe has been judged already, because he has not believed in the name of the only born Son of God. This is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and men loved the darkness rather than the light, for their works were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and doesn't come to the light, lest his works would be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his works may be revealed, that they have been done in God. Passage number 4. This is from Romans chapter 9, verses 10 through 24. The scripture says, Not only so, but Rebekah also conceived by one, by our father Isaac. For being not yet born, neither having done anything good or bad, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him who calls, it was said to her, the elder will serve the younger. Even as it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? May it never be. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. So then it is not of him who wills, nor of him who runs, but of God who has mercy. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, For this very purpose I caused you to be raised up, that I might show in you my power, and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. So then, he has mercy on whom he desires, and he hardens whom he desires. You will say then to me, Why does he still find fault? For who withstands his will? But indeed, O oh man, who are you to reply against God? Will the thing formed ask him who formed it, why did you make me like this? Or hasn't the potter a right over the clay, from the same lump to make one part a vessel for honour, and another for dishonour? 
What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much patience vessels of wrath prepared for destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on vessels of mercy, which he prepared beforehand for glory, us, whom he also called, not from the Jews only, but also from the Gentiles. Passage number 5. The fifth verse is from Romans chapter 10, verses 5 through 17. The Bible says, for Moses writes about the righteousness of the law, the one who does them will live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith says this, don't say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down, or, who will descend into the abyss? That is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach, that if you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made resulting in salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, and is rich to all who call on him. For, whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? How will they believe in him whom they have not heard? How will they hear without a preacher? And how will they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. But they didn't all listen to the glad news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Congratulations. You've made it halfway through our study. So let's pause here for a moment. I want to remind you again that if you want to study this topic more, then be sure to visit the link in the description below. The link will take you to our website, helpfulscripture.com, where you can study more Bible verses on the subject of free will, and hundreds of other topics. Now let's continue our study on free will. Passage number 6 is from John chapter 6, verse 44. It says, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up in the last day. Passage number 7. The seventh verse is found in Galatians chapter 5, verses 13 through 17. The Bible says, For you, brothers, were called for freedom. Only don't use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love be servants to one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word, in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, be careful that you don't consume one another. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, that you may not do the things that you desire. Passage number 8. The eighth verse on the subject of free will is from John chapter 1, verses 12 through 13. It reads, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become God's children, to those who believe in his name, who were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Passage number 9. Our ninth verse is from Romans chapter 1, verses 20 through 25. The passage states, For the invisible things of him since the creation of the world are clearly seen, being perceived through the things that are made, even his everlasting power and divinity, that they may be without excuse. Because knowing God, they didn't glorify him as God, and didn't give thanks, but became vain in their reasoning, and their senseless heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and traded the glory of the incorruptible God for the likeness of an image of corruptible man, and of birds, four-footed animals, and creeping things. Therefore God also gave them up in the lusts of their hearts to uncleanness, that their bodies should be dishonored among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for a lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Passage number 10. Our tenth and final verse on the subject of free will is from Genesis chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. It says, Yahweh God took the man, and put him into the garden of Eden to cultivate and keep it. Yahweh God commanded the man, saying, You may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but you shall not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for in the day that you eat of it, you will surely die. This concludes our Bible study on the topic of free will. If you want to study this topic more, then click the link below to visit our website, 
where we have many more Bible verses related to free will, and hundreds of other Bible subjects. Also, remember to like the video and share it with your friends on social media, to help spread the gospel. Thanks again for listening and God bless.